Hey everybody, this is HD and I'm coming back at you guys with another HD commentary of a ladder game here. I know a lot of people have been wanting me to uh, play ladders as I, I promised you guys I would be doing a lot of ladder games and what better time than now because this is right before my flight to Atlantic City. Literally, I'm probably like one hour away from flying and I thought, you know what, now's a good time to go ahead and play some ladder. And, uh, you know, I'm competing at Orlando one week after Atlantic City and I, I figure it's a good time to brush up on my skills and, and make sure that everything's still working out um, at least decently well. So here we are, this is going to be myself playing of course as a Zerg against this Protoss named Horse Force, which <laughs> I think is kind of a cool name. Um, but as you guys can see, I am now on check six. I was, uh, VP was actually acquired by Check6 about a week ago, and um, basically a lot of the guys from VP went over, uh, uh, I know Pain User went over, Sickness went over, myself, Chance, and a couple of others. And so now we're part of Check6 Gaming, which uh, is kind of cool. It's been an organization that has been around for quite some time. And uh, it's kind of nice having a lot of practice partners that are all, you know, very high level at StarCraft 2. Anyways, um, I am going to be the Green Zerg here, as you guys can see, and as always, my ladder games are always first-person view, as you guys can see here. Uh, my mouse clicks, everything is recorded, and uh, you guys will be able to get the unique first-hand experience of being able to see me play from uh, my own camera, my own perspective. Which I think is kind of unique. It adds a little bit more flavor to uh, watching StarCraft 2 because everyone watches replays, everyone watches from third-person view, but first-person view really uh, helps, I think, people improve their game, especially when they're able to watch, you know, someone uh, and, and figure out what their weaknesses are and, and how to emulate certain builds better. So anyways, I am going to be spawning here on Antigua Shipyard, which I think is a pretty cool map. I actually like this map a lot, namely because the third expansion is an interesting location for a third. If you guys ever notice, the third has rocks, which you can actually access from the center of the map. And if you think about it, that's actually really favorable for Zerg, and that's the reason why I actually like this map a lot. Uh, early in the game, you can actually send a couple of Zerglings to take out those rocks, and uh, towards the mid-game, once that path has already been opened, you can just flood in lings whenever you want and just do a lot of damage to the opponent's uh, natural expansion. Now I think I think Horse Force was Protoss if I wasn't mistaken so um, he is I believe a Masters level Protoss as well. I, I believe I checked this after I played the game so um, it looks like yeah he is Protoss so he's sending his scouting probe in here already and one thing that I'm doing here that's kind of interesting is I'm opening with an 11 pool and uh, this is something that VP or Check 6 now, Check 6 Chance, which is well considered to be our best Zerg, uh, sort of uh, entrepreneur. It's his own little build, which a lot of the Zergs now are doing. Um, and namely because the 11 pool allows you to get early Zerglings to deal with pylon aggression, protoss aggression, any kind of gateway cheese or, or any early aggression. At the same time, it really doesn't sacrifice too much economy. So you get an 11 pool, you pump drones to 15, and then um, you make four zerglings. And as soon as those four zerglings pop out, you send a drone out and you make a hatchery. So you get the hatchery down, you don't got to worry about any can cannon shenanigans or, or anything, you know, that is really bothersome that the protoss player can field around this time in the game. And on top of that, a lot of Protosses will see that early pull and they'll be like, what the? And so they'll just build up a bunch of forces, sometimes they'll overreact, and you never know, sometimes you can bust down their front door with a handful of Zerglings this early on as well. So, uh, I do have my natural down right now. And I do have my Zerglings starting to explore around the map just to find out where my opponent has spawned, and it looks like he's not going to be down here. So, there he is, he's going to be at the other side of the map, and unfortunately for him, he did not wall off the wall correctly so one of my zerglings is able to leak in and if you're a protoss player immediately if you see this you want to build a building right there and finish that wall off it looks like my zergling luckily with one hp kills off his probe so that was a bit of a a glance of fair luck right there but if you're a protoss player you need to finish that wall off you have to build a pylon there or something because any zerg any high level zerg that sees this is going to immediately capitalize on it I don't know why I did it there, I decided to hesitate and run back. Of course, I'm not a high level Zerg. Uh, but I ran the Zerglings in uh, eventually, and I got three inside his natural. Which at this stage is devastating for a Protoss who fast expands. Think about it, he's only got a gateway right now. His uh, his only unit that can come out to really save him is a Zealot, because he opened Forge and Cannons. Uh, he really doesn't have a Cybernetics Core yet, and a Zealot 
can be kited by a handful of Zerglings and you can annoy the probe line almost all day long. So as you guys can see here, I'm doing just that and I don't necessarily need to kill any probes. Uh, just by doing this, I'm already forcing him to pull probes off the line and uh, all in all, that's very, that's very good already for the cost of a couple of Zerglings. If you're a Protoss player and you're ever dealing with that, don't pull all your probes off the line. Just send one or two to push the Zerglings away, pull back the probes that are weakened, and be very efficient with how you, um, you know, deal with those Zerglings. Now, as you guys all remember, this is, of course, <laughs> one hour before I'm about to hop on my airplane, and I just wanted to get a bunch of practice games out um, before I compete at MLG. I want to brush up on my game knowledge and, of course, brush up on, uh, on my game sense and, and timings, and, you know, I really want to try to get past the first couple of rounds at MLG. Hopefully, we'll, that'll happen this time around. Uh, we'll just have to see, but let's see here. Um, I do have a couple of Zerglings out. I actually have a handful. I do this a lot now against Protoss. Um, I'll build a bunch of units in the middle and, and just put them in front of the natural. And if I sense any moment in the game where there is weakness, if I can sniff any weakness from the opponent, I just go with my gut and I go and attack. Um, and the reason for that is I really, these days you really don't want to deal with a Protoss in the late game. I feel like in the late game, Zerg has a very hard time dealing with Colossus, Force Fields, Void Rays, Dark Templar, um, especially when all those units are conglomerated into one giant ball. Um, unless the map is something like Belshire Beach where it's wide open in the middle of the map, you're going to have a very hard time fighting at choke points. So. A lot of times, I am the aggressor when, you know, the metagame right now, a lot of Protosses expand right away and they expect Zergs to grab another hatchery, play macro, but if you think at the next level, what's the, what's the best thing you can do? You can attack the Protoss while he's probing up, while he's just getting his gateways coming out, and he really doesn't have that much army at all and if you're lucky you can bust through the front door and you can do a lot of damage at, 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 at the very least it's not an all-in remember guys this isn't cheese this isn't all-in or anything like this it's roach ling or roach bane ling or whatever you want to do some type of aggression um, and behind this what you want to do is drone up so the objective isn't necessarily to kill your opponent but rather to do damage or perhaps indirect damage maybe your opponent will you know overreact or something so um, I do have quite a few units out right now, and I do have to wait for the roaches. My uh, my idea here is to break a building at the front, whatever building I feel like is best to break, and then flood the lings in and, and do whatever damage I can. Now, a lot of times players will go for the weakest building, which is a pylon or maybe a cannon, but you have to remember a force field can cover that pretty quickly. So um, you really want to find the building. Uh, at this situation right here, you want to hit the forge, and the reason being is that the roaches won't have to you know go around and fight other buildings plus the forge is right there plus you're going to cancel the plus one weapons upgrade and there's a lot of things that kind of factor into your decision making and at that moment in time i was like you know forge is probably the easiest of course i keep my links in the back my opponent has no idea about all these links and then i flood them in so uh, at this point it may actually end up killing him i'm not entirely sure he doesn't look like he's going to have enough defenses but um you know if you break in that successfully uh, maybe you know you got to be able to adjust your play maybe it's best not to drone up maybe it's best to just commit to more units and i think in this situation you've already got a uh, i've already got a bunch of units in his main i sent a couple of links up to the main to deal with probes and of course i left my main army at the nat so i'm multitasking his uh his ability to play and, and, and defend this it's probably best just to flood in more units than, rather than drone up so you guys can see I do have my uh, larva all coming right now. I am a little bit high in supply, unfortunately, uh, and in uh, minerals. So I'm not macroing the best as I can. I need actually those extra hatcheries up. But, you know, sometimes when you're attacking, you have to realize when it's best to just let your uh, computer handle the attacking units and go back and macro. A lot of players get focused on micro, 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 and you don't, you know, you don't really want to come back after all that micro and realize, oh crap, I've got 1.5, 2k, 3k minerals saved up. So as you guys can see, my opponent ends up leaving because uh, he's just screwed. And uh, I get some a couple more Zerglings in there. And so yeah, he leaves the game. That is uh, Horse Force. And that was a pretty quick 1-0 against a uh, fairly good Protoss opponent, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping I see more Zergs utilize these kinds of strategies of being more aggressive. Too many Zergs are passive, I feel like, and that can be your downfall. You gotta recognize when it's right to be passive and when it's right to be aggressive. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed that video and uh, I will probably need to start uh, packing all my stuff and bouncing out. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be flying out, of course, to Atlantic City and to uh, MLG Orlando. Hopefully you guys all tune in and uh, I'll see you guys next time. HD, signing out.